Thank you. Hi, everybody. Nice to have you here. It's a real pleasure to have the chance to talk today here um, and together with my dear colleague, Marius Holst. Um, we will be presenting on international power to X hubs. And we want to give you some of our latest results and insights and, of course, innovations into the global production and supply costs of green, hydrogen, and derivatives. We have been sent here by the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems, ISE, in Germany, southwestern Germany, in Freiburg. Um, and this um, Renewable Energy Institute, founded in 1981 and home to, I think, more than 1,400 scientists, is the largest research institute in Germany dedicated to renewable energies, energy transformation, and de defossilization of our economies. And besides the very important stuff like photovoltaics, energy efficient buildings, power electronic and smart grids, in the business area, hydrogen technologies, we are assessing the yeah, cost efficient and yeah, clean transformation towards an energy system based on hydrogen and sustainable energy carriers. This business area is divided into three departments. The first department for fuel cell systems assesses everything what um, is related to PEM fuel cells, their characterization, their modeling, and cost-efficient large-scale manufacturing, and the integration of fuel cells into mobility and drivetrain applications. The second department for electrolysis and hydrogen infrastructure is dedicated to everything what, what comes with hydrogen production based on water electrolysis, hydrogen injection into the natural gas grid, and of course the simulation of power to X systems and techno-economic assessments. And the Department of Sustainable Synthesis Products deals then with everything what comes yeah, downstream uh, to the hydrogen production, the conversion of hydrogen into valuable chemicals, energy carriers, and their techno-economic and life cycle assessment. And we will jump directly into one of our latest studies um, we conducted for the H2 Global Foundation. I don't think that I have to explain the H2 Global mechanism again here. Um, there, the study goal for us was to do a holistic techno-economic cost assessment for green power to X pathways for the year in uh, 2030. Um, and in this study, we had a focus on 12 pre-selected countries for which we assessed 39 regions on a global scale. And for these regions, we calculated the cost, the local production cost and the supply cost for gases and liquid hydrogen, ammonia, methanol, and sustainable aviation fuel based on the fischer tropsch pathway. We did advanced system simulation. Advanced in that context means that we are considering the impact of fluctuating renewables production and more or less steady state synthesis conversion into chemicals and energy carriers and its impact on the resulting hydrogen intermediate storage, the buffer storage between electrolysis and synthesis and the impact on the final costs. Yeah, we assessed a 100% green system. That means that we are considering solely dedicated wind and PV for the hydrogen production, solely green hydrogen. And of course, water supply has been, we did a scan for all regions, if it's an arid region or if there's enough fresh sweet water available. And if it was a water scarce region, we considered seawater desalination in our techno-economic assessments. And for the transport, we considered either ships or pipelines. For the pipelines, we were differentiating uh, in between um, dedicated new built pipelines and refurbished natural gas pipelines. Just a brief glimpse for, on the results for 2030. What we observed the first hand was, of course, that the lowest, lowest power to X production cost can be achieved for the countries with high wind and solar full out hours. I think that's nothing new to anyone here in the audience. Um, another aspect is that the combination of favorable wind and PV potential is even more important. Yeah? In that context, that means that these hybrid locations featuring wind and PV have a, yeah, with a very specific seasonal fluctuation can have a very beneficial impact on the final production and supply cost for hydrogen and derivatives. And of course, the total product transport distance, for example, from Australia to the port of Rotterdam can have a decisive influence but is not a knockout criterion in that matter. 
for gases hydrogen, of course, Spain and North African countries in the MENA region, they will become key players in the next years. Or as soon as we have a hydrogen backbone available, we can transport green hydrogen in large amounts at very low cost in case we have a pipeline available. And for the liquid energy carriers, countries like Brazil, Australia and parts of Colombia have emerged as very promising favorites in that study within the selected 12 pre-selected countries. Speaking about Australia, speaking about Australia, we um, are now enrolled in a cooperation project called um, TriHub. This is a joint initiative for the development of a 3 million tons per year ammonia export hub between Western Australia, the Netherlands and Germany. And before we will directly dive into the results for this trial project, I will just give you a short introduction to our site suitability analysis, which aims at identifying the most suitable locations for large scale wind PV and power to X hubs. And this method is based on GIS, Geographic Information System, and is divided in five main steps. The first step is the identification of restriction areas, where we do a detailed compilation of um, areas which are absolutely unsuitable, non-suitable for the installation of wind PV. And this is based on information about settlements, infrastructure, ecological and cultural criteria. And the second step, which is more or less the most important step, is um, the, the building up of suitability criteria. There we select specific criteria, of course the solar and wind potential at a specific region or in the whole country and uh, other physical or techno-economic factors. And then we have a weighting of these criteria in order to give them a, uh, yeah, a specific, specific relevance. And the third step is just an overlay of the restriction areas and the suitability criteria. And that enables us a, yeah, yeah, plotting a map for the remaining areas which are suitable for the installation of large-scale wind, PV, and power to X infrastructure. The fourth step is the site clustering, in which we are clustering promising areas for either wind or PV in order to have enough installed capacity powering our envisioned electrolysis capacity. And based on that, we can already have a first-hand estimation on the theoretical potential for the renewable energy production at the site. The fifth step is then a scan of available infrastructure for then finally selecting the suitable location for the power to X hub, where the electricity is transformed in our green molecules. And all this is then fed into our, into our techno-economic simulations, which Marius uh, will soon present. Just the two maps for Australia, we conducted within the tri project. In the left-hand map, you see the potential for ground-mounted PV in this area. So the circle you see here is uh, located in Western Australia with a diameter of uh, almost 700 kilometers. And the central map is for onshore wind. And the right-hand map is then the clustered wind and PV sites. In blue are the wind sites, in orange are the solar sites. <laughs> and regarding the PV clusters, we identified around 55 gigawatts of installed renewable capacity, PV capacity in that range. And for the onshore wind clusters, we identified more or less 21 gigawatts of potentially installable wind capacity in these regions. And now Marius will give you some more information about the techno-economic results of this region. Yeah, thank you very much, Christopher. Yes. Uh, I, like, I will now continue with the uh, results of our techno-economic analysis for the project. Um, first, or oh, before we dive into the results, I will uh, give a short word about the methodology we applied. So we use a system model of the whole supply chain to analyze the supply cost of ammonia in this case. Um, the model or the system contains uh, next to wind also PV, and of course we will have an electrolysis. And we, to, for the production of ammonia, we will have the um, Harbour Bosch process. And then there's also a terminal plant uh, to export the ammonia um, via um, transport vessels to the port of Rotterdam. Um, yeah, the model contains all the different components in, within the system. And um, then there's, of course, a question. We want to export 3 million tons of ammonia. What will be the most cost-efficient uh, system layout? 
because we can, of course we can play a little bit around with the installed capacities for wind and PV, but we also need to take into account the um, capacity of the electrolysis and the ammonia synthesis. And because the ammonia synthesis needs to be run at more or less steady state, we need of course to take into account a hydrogen buffer storage. Uh, for this, we have an optimization algorithm, uh, which uh, and the aim of the optimization algorithm is to minimize the supply cost of ammonia to the port of Rotterdam. And now you see uh, the yellow marked components, and all these components can be changed by the optimization algorithm in order to find the lowest cost or the combinations, combination which offers us the lowest cost um, of ammonia. Um, it's an iterative process, so it goes step by step, and in each step there will be uh, hundreds and hundreds of different um, combinations will be tested and uh, simulated within our simulation model. Uh, here we consider, uh, uh, or we do an annual simulation, we are considering um, uh, the wind and PV power production from different years, um, as we can see here. And we also uh, see, for example, the capacity uh, or the production of ammonia uh, by the um, Haber-Bosch process. Uh, in the end, after the optimization, we know the perfect system layout, which de uh, delivers us the lowest cost. And also, we know, of course, um, other values like uh, the total investment cost, the system efficiency, also the followed hours. And um, yeah, based on these results, we can continue with the uh, cost reduction analysis and also sensitivity analysis. Jumping now into the results for uh, for the for the ammonia production, um, we did a, a we I have now two results um, or three uh, three target years. The first one is 2030, and then we um, assume for 2040 and 2050 a lower cost for wind and PV. So going down for wind from uh, 40 euro per megawatt hour to 24, uh, 25 euro per megawatt hour in 2050. And also we assumed, uh, for example, for the electrolysis, lower, uh, lower investment costs. And also the weighted average of cost of capital play a, play a major role in, redu in cost reduction. And here we also assumed uh, a cost reduction. So what we see in 2030 here, we have, will have import costs of green ammonia. So it's an off-grid system more or less. It's green ammonia, 100% green ammonia of around about 200 euros per megawatt hour. And this is roughly 1,000 euro per ton. Um, the cost can go down up to until 2050 to around about 100 uh, euro per megawatt hour, which is around about 500 euro per ton. But one important information is here, uh, not the time reduces the cost, but um, the global ramp up of technologies like wind, PV, electrolysis, and all the components involved in supply chain can reduce the cost in the future. So, no time, so there's no time to wait. Um, it's time to act now. Um, we also did an analysis of different energy carriers uh, like uh, liquid hydrogen and methanol. Um, for both energy carriers, we see slightly higher costs, but more or less these are is in the uncertainty range. Um, but it's important to note when we want to produce methanol, we need a, a carbon source to produce um, to yeah to bring methanol uh, to bring the carbon and hydrogen together to form methanol. And this is more or less not available at the analyzed site, um, except by direct air capture. And currently, direct air capture is related to, um, to quite high um, investment costs. And we are a little bit far, or it's not uh, steady or not at a high TRL so far. And we also need to ramp up this technology. Um, next, for liquid hydrogen, of course, um, it's possible to liquefy hydrogen. But also we need here to ramp up the capacities of hydrogen liquefiers and of course we need the transport infrastructure like the transport vessels. So far there's only one transport vessel for demonstration purposes. Yeah, already coming to the wrap up and um, the outlook. Um, of course green hydrogen will become uh, the energy currency of the future. So it's no time to wait to bring green hydrogen production plants online. Um, as these are the key to a defossilization of industries and mobility and yeah, our life. Um, security, of course, we need to take into account security of energy supply. So as Christoph showed, um, lowest costs can, can be reached via pipeline transportation of gaseous hydrogen to Europe from the MENA region. However, in terms of energy security, it's always also important to uh, consider the import, uh, the import of um, liquid fuels via ships. 
as we showed for Australia in the case, and um, we also identified in our analysis um, other very high suitable sites on the global map, like for example Colombia or Brazil and um, also Namibia, for example. Um, yeah, maybe also as a last word, um, at the moment we are not at the one euro fifty, which are always promised, and it will take some time and technology development to bring down the cost. But I think we are going the good way. Um, but again, it's no time to wait. We need to install wind and PV capacities. This is more or more or less the most important component of all the supply chain uh, yeah, to bring or to develop wind and PV projects. And then we can talk about um, uh, also, yeah, then we can also need to install electrolysis. Um, yeah, showing on the last slide. Um, there will be a public publication of the results uh, in the next couple of months. Also, we will publish a report on PowerDX production in Colombia. And um, also, please reach out to other reports uh, by us um, on different research topics regarding Power2x and hydrogen production. Thank you. And you can find us now at Boost C46.